understand as I tell you to What's competition? Come show me proof This God flow, this Jesus Christ That say a prayer for I sleep at night I'm still sinning, and don't be offended My dick attended for a Spanish wife This chest home and I check us niggas Ain't playing with you, no action figures What I'm supposed to do Hey guys, this is your boy Dino aka DLP here Welcome back to another video to my channel And today guys, yes as you can see by the title Yes it is time Yes, it's that death battle time. I'm actually very excited for this death battle today. Uh, today we'll be checking out the latest death battle being Ang from Avatar The Last Airbender versus Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, slash Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Um, now, before I'm going to get into this video, I'm just going to state my opinion on it. Reason why I don't need to see the research to think who would win this death battle uh, is because I've reacted to both series. I've reacted to the Avatar Last, Airb Last Airbender series and right after that I reacted to Korra and then straight after the Avatar series as a whole I went to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood so I know I would say I'm pretty confident in knowing both char characters pretty well so I'm just going to say this. I'm just going to put this out there I don't see Edward Elric winning I'm sorry but I just don't see Edward Elric beating Ang <laughs> in any say it, any sort of way, shape, or form. Like, don't get me wrong, Edward Elric is an amazing state alchemist, younger state alchemist, uh, very clever, very very intelligent uh, when he battles as well. So he's nothing short of amazing, all right. But Ang, come on, Ang, the Avatar himself, like he wields all the elements. His Avatar state. Dude, the guy, I don't think Ang needs to go into the Avatar state, personally, uh, to beat Edward Elric, but I'm pretty sure Death Bower, knowing Death Bower, they're going to bring up the Avatar state, the weaknesses that when he gets, if he gets killed uh, while in the, he's in his Avatar state, the cycle breaks, basically, the Avatar cycle. Uh, but he's the most, he's most powerful at his state. Uh, in the Avatar state, he's the most powerful, but his souls are the most vulnerable state of his. So, um... To be honest, even then, uh, if if Ang was gonna go into the Avatar state, it would be a bit of an overkill. <laughs> like, that's my personal opinion. Um, now, there's one thing that I have noticed with both characters is that they don't like to kill. They don't kill. They don't like to kill people. Uh, if you've noticed, like Edward Elric uh, uh, and Ang, they don't kill. They don't like to kill people. They go against that kind of rule. That kind of thing you know uh so i don't know how both characters like that were put into a death battle when they don't like to kill other people despite whether they're their enemies and whatnot i don't know how death battle went around that but uh i guess it is what it is so i'm not gonna waste any more time i'm gonna go ahead and jump into this reaction if you guys want to go ahead and grab something to eat or drink sorry if you can go ahead and pause the video right now if not that's also fine because i'm gonna go ahead and jump into this reaction guys uh before you watch the death battle itself Comment in the section below and tell me uh, who do you think, guy? Who do you think would win and why? Um, yeah, so let's just get to it. Uh, Stop recording. PC screen. Uh, volume. Yeah, that's okay as well. So let's get to it. In three, two, one, go. Have you heard of hymns? They're all about making you look and feel good. Thanks to science, baldness can be optimal. That's what she said. Because hymns Sorry. is here to help. <laughs> Forhims.com is your one-stop solution for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Hair loss. Okay. With the complete... right. okay, fair enough. <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's go. Two, two of my favorite shows of all time. And no average person can tame them. But somehow these kids can master them with a vengeance. Like pain. <laughs> The Avatar and Edward Elric, the Full Metal Alchemist. Yes, boys. He's with nine boomsticks. Oh, this is gonna be and too good. Analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Okay, two D battle. I don't care, but it's still gonna be good. Water, earth, fire. Let's see what the air. research tells us. Heart. Go <laughs> Once the four nations lived in Heart. harmony, some of the citizens could even learn to bend their nation's elements. Mm. But only the Avatar could master all four, and it's their duty to protect the balance between these nations. Mm. And since there's always got to be an Avatar around, a new one is born whenever the last one dies. Yep. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. 
Attempting to conquer the other three nations, the Avatar would inevitably be their greatest obstacle. Yep. Man, they'd even go after a kid! <laughs> Living among the Air Nomads, Aang was an energetic and dutiful 12 years old when he learned of his destiny. Mm. He was the newest incarnation of the Avatar. But he totally wussed out, ran away from home, and got <laughs> frozen in ice for a hundred years. Yeah. What the hell? That's not what I'd do if I found out I was an awesome elemental badass. I'd definitely find a way to make money off that. <laughs> He's 12. He's 12. <laughs> But running away actually saved his life, as the Fire Nation knew the next Avatar would be an Air Nomad, and slaughtered them all in a yeah. horrific surprise attack. Awful. But the poor kid wouldn't be stuck in ice forever. He was eventually rescued by some new friends, and began Sorry his quest to learn the other elements and save the world. And Yo, one of these characters, I missed him! I missed him, Katara, Asaka, um... Toph, yes, <laughs> Zuko, yo, I love these characters, I miss them! He's an air nomad, he can really bend the wind to his will. Appa, uh, like, he can use air bending to create whirlwinds and tornadoes or slice through solid stone. Pretty and much. he can fly! Whee! Well, it's not exactly flying boomstick. What he actually does is manipulate the air currents to keep a lock. Yeah. That's why he carries a glider, complete with snacks. Hmm. Oh, well, I'm sure that'll come in handy. <laughs> Whatever, yep. if it looks like a duck and sounds like a duck, it's a duck. What? Or I guess, flying avatar guy. But ducks actually can fly. Anyway, Aang can use <laughs> air in pretty much every aspect of right, his life. Let's see what these guys have put. Air bending. Okay, wind manipulation, water bending, northern and southern style. Liquid manipulation includes ice and mist. Earth bending, okay, fair enough. Like for shields, increasing his speed, improving agility, adjusting his body temperature, and even focusing his breath to use as an attack. Mm. After he learned water bending from Paku and Katara, Aang can make whips, knives, and literal tsunamis. Hey, I can do that too. Just Avatar give me a State, pool yeah. and watch this cannonball fly. Does that mean I'm a waterbender? Uh, sure. <laughs> Waterbenders can also wow. manipulate steam ice. Mm. Just like how I, the great waterbender Boomstick the Wet, will use my powers to swim through this frozen block. You what? Yep. Uh, waterbending okay. 101. <sighs> you can be jealous. Oh wow, I'm just bursting with envy. Bending <laughs> powers activate! <laughs> ah! Uh... Ha! Success! Oh my god. Like airbending. Water bending requires a nearby source of water to use, mm. like a pond or a filled bottle. The same goes for earth bending, which Aang learned from his mentor Toph. Yes! Earth bending is all about throwing Bad rocks skill. at people, and a bunch of other cool stuff, like making walls and earthquakes and causing the ground to swallow you up, which is kind of creepy actually. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, Aang learned the art of fire bending from his longtime rival, Prince Zuko. Unlike My the other character ones, in the series. firebenders can actually create fire to at will. Firebending is so goddamn powerful! It's even got the <laughs> deadliest bending technique of all! Mm. Shooting lightning! Well, only yeah. the most advanced firebenders can cast lightning, which is usually an instant kill move. Oh. While Aang never learned the move itself, he has learned how to redirect it through his body. Yeah. But even after learning the four elements, Aang got to meet one last master bender, who taught him the art of manipulating a person's life energy. Yeah. The purest form of bending. It's super dangerous, though, and one mistake could tear up Aang's soul. And with it, Aang defeated the Fire Lord and brought peace to the world at large. Well, Took with that Aang with his super Fox form, it. the Avatar State. Yes! In the Avatar State, Aang's bending abilities grow immensely powerful. Woo. This is because the Avatar State lets Aang draw upon the power and wisdom of all previous <laughs> Avatar incarnations. Though it is Too extremely good. risky. Oh, uh, come on, really? Someone's ringing the fucking bell now when I'm watching this death battle? I'll be right back, guys. I'm sorry about this. Someone's ringing the bell. Always, always the case. Let me be back. Sorry, guys. I'm back right now. Uh, it turns out that the postman uh, um, tried to deliver the letter to my neighbors and they weren't there, so they gave it to me. So, yeah, that was all. <laughs> sorry about that, but let's get back to this. Let's get back to this awesome death battle that's about to happen. <laughs> as dying while in the Avatar state ends the cycle of reincarnation permanently. Yep. Why would he care if he's dead anyway? Whatever. The coolest thing about the Avatar state is it makes you glow like this. Behold a 
<laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> How are you doing that? Yeah. Oh, I, I drink a bunch of glow sticks. You need to go to the doctor. What the like, fuck? Like right now. <laughs> My liver's press is way worse than this. Well, with or without the Avatar State, Kane is plenty powerful. Mm. He has the ability to move gigantic stone columns and even carve canyons around an entire city. Mm. Not only has he survived hits from earthbending kings and massive explosions, he threw this gigantic column of rock at the Fire Lord. To get the column fast, we me. compared Aang's height against it and determined <laughs> it must weigh 9,500 tons. Aang's super fast, too. With airbending, he can run on water. <laughs> Given his size, requires a movement speed of well over 67 miles per hour. Damn. He used airbending to block a giant column-destroying explosive attack from the best-named character on the show, Combustion Man! <laughs> Combustion and Man. And he's proven he could redirect lightning from the Fire Lord himself. Yeah. Taking into account the distance between them mm. and how far his arm had to move to catch the lightning, he would have to react at least 155 times faster than sound. Shades me! He is pretty <laughs> unused to violence, though. I mean, he's a vegetarian pacifist for crying out loud. Mm. But while he may seem like <laughs> just a kid, Aang still saved the world and led it into a peaceful future. True. To him, bending is elementary. If you want to be a bender, you have to let go of fear. And Aang's too good! Angus too OP without the Avatar state. That's what I'm on about. He's plenty OP without the Avatar state. I just don't see Edward Elric beating him, but let's see the research. The alchemists of old once tried to turn lead into gold with not great results. But in the country of Amestris, the ancient science of alchemy is actually possible by using the Earth's natural energy to reshape the molecular structure of various objects. Amazing yeah, show, by the way. Thingy. A transmutation circle, yep. which most alchemists use, except for the useful prodigy, Edward Elric. Oh, what a little badass. Careful, Boomstick. He's a bit touchy about his size. <laughs> hey, if I lost my mom like he did, I'd get mad at the little stuff, too. But Ed and his brother Alphonse figured they could bring it back <laughs> with alchemy. Seriously? So they went for it, but things went south oh, real yeah. fast. Mm -mm. You know how people say they give an arm and a leg for something? Well, Ed literally did, and poor Al lost his whole body. Luckily, Ed managed to stick his brother's soul in a suit of armor. So but cool. still, yikes. This horrible experience has forever marked the two brothers. Yeah. No one is meant to transmute the human soul, and the boys were lucky just to escape with their lives. But he got something good out of it, like super secret knowledge, including how to do alchemy without a circle thingy. Mm. He just has to clap instead. <laughs> so, worth it. With <laughs> these new abilities, Ed and Alchemy oh, it's too good, their man. to restore their bodies. Specifically, they sought the incredible power of a philosopher's Philosopher stone, Philosopher stone, believing it to be their only chance. Eventually, Ed joined the military, and thanks to his amazing potential, he was named by the Fuhrer, the Full Metal Alchemist. Bradley. Hmm. Wait, what? what? Adolf Hitler? <laughs> nah, it's just Bradley. He's okay. <laughs> Until he isn't. Spoilers! Also, since Ed lost a couple limbs, he got them replaced with Automail. Kinda like my leg! Automail is made from incredibly durable metal, ranging from his original steel one, to a gas-powered one, to his best version consisting of a mix of aluminum and carbon. Apart from being durable metal prosthetics, Ed's automail limbs function just like normal ones. He can even reshape his arm as a weapon. So he can turn it into swords and saws and stuff, increase its durability by hardening its makeup, or turn it into an umbrella! Ah, truly a limb of many talents. <laughs> but at the end of the day, Ed's true talent lies not in sword fighting or umbrella holding, but the art of alchemy. Mm. He can do all sorts of crazy things with all the elements. He can basically <laughs> make anything he wants, like spears and shields. Yeah. So long as he follows the rule of equivalent exchange. Yeah. Anything created with alchemy must have a source of equal value yeah. and cannot be made fundamentally different. For example, lead can be molded into a statue, but it cannot be turned into water. Other than that, there are three principles needed to use alchemy well. Mm. Comprehension. Which means you gotta understand what the thing you're using is made of. Deconstruction. Destruction, breaking stuff down. And reconstruction. Mm. Putting stuff back together. Ed is only limited by the materials at hand and his imagination. <laughs> at his mm. full potential, he can do almost anything. He can purify water, create ammonium gas from ammonium nitrate, repair entire houses, and transform a gun into a trumpet. <laughs> Don't you ever try and do that with any of my guns. Anyway, Ed's also learned destruction alchemy, which does exactly what you think it does. 
Make a big old kaboom! That was learned from it's Skull, right? It's used to destroy right? stuff like auto mail, but it can also be used to explode people's heads! Mm, yeah. So, using destruction alchemy, Ed should be able to destroy something like this on a molecular level. Ha! Or you can just do that. <laughs> anyway, with all of his abilities, Ed has done some incredibly impressive things. Not only has he blocked gunfire from a Gatling gun after it started firing, he's dodged a pistol from nearly point-blank range, and his automail arm even took a bite from a lion-headed chimera. Oh, yeah. It was totally fine! Assuming this chimera the fuck has a similar of... bite force to that of a real lion, that means Ed's arm stood up to a force of 1,000 pounds per square inch. Mm. He's created a gigantic That's cannon, a and then survived that cannon exploding while he was standing on it. And then he survived being on top of a huge boulder exploding, too. We can measure the boulder's explosion against Ed's size to get an approximate energy. I don't remember this on the Brotherhood. Feet, well, I can't remember this on Brotherhood, guys. Is that something I'm not tons remembering? How's that for equivalent exchange, bitches? 102 he tons of TNT. an explosion that took out most of a 10-story building. Oh, yeah. Even apart oh. from being tough, Ed has shown considerable strength when using alchemy. Like when he created a gigantic golem to crush his opponent. By measuring the size of the stone golem's thumb, comparing it to the size of the average human's thumb, and using that scale to estimate the size of the golem, that gives us an estimated weight of over 3,000 metric tons. Shit. All this without <laughs> any philosopher's stone. Oh yeah, because true. Because it turns out those things are really, really messed up. Right. It uses human life to create them. stones are extremely powerful and can be used in many different ways. Kimberly, the Crimson Lotus Alchemist, for example, used one to create a <laughs> massive explosion equal to 157 kilotons of TNT. However, it turns out that these stones are composed of imprisoned human souls. Yep. So Ed and Al vow to avoid them on principle. Sure. Although Ed can boost his alchemic power in a similar manner by drawing on his own life force, mm. increasing his potential at the cost of shortening his lifespan. But that's what Ed ultimately had to learn, <laughs> what it truly means to let something go. Dang. So he found another way to revive Al's body, sacrificing his own power for the sake of family. Oh, what That's a nice cute. guy! Very cute. But all in all, so long as Ed knows what he's trying to transmute, he's an amazing force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Now let's go home together. Sacrifices in his own alchemy, own use of alchemy to save his brother. Now that's brotherly love right there, man. All right, the combats are set, and we've run the date. Now I don't need to pause and then talk about who would win the battle. I've, I'm going with Aang. As much as I love Edward Elric and how he is as a character and his abilities, nothing short of amazing. But Aang's just gonna wipe the floor with him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, former Alchemist fans, but it's Aang. And come on, Avatar. It is through all possibilities. But first, thanks to Blue Apron, I've become a. So I'm a bit hungry as well. Just came By now, you've probably I'm heard of Blue starving. Apron, the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. Oh, did it just User get loud or something? Get the some <laughs> My I'll have a my Blue Apron. Come slash battle. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. But re oh! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! Okay, now if you've noticed who that uh, voice is for Edward Elric, I instantly knew it because I heard about uh, this guy because I watch his YouTube videos as well. If you guys know someone called Kagi Films, he actually voices certain characters in certain shows. Uh, he, I think he voiced a character in My Hero Academia as well. That's his voice. For Edward Elric, it's uh, Kagi Films. Check him out on YouTube, amazing YouTuber, amazing YouTuber, plays all sorts of games. Oh shit! <laughs> okay. Yep, there you go. The bending coming in useful. Nice. 
Edward Elric is not like a pushover, let me tell you that. Way oh, hey, water bending, of course. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, there are actually a lot of advantages to being short. Like, you'll never hit your head on door trees, <laughs> and uh, I'm still growing! <laughs> I'm still growing. Oh, that's a fucking fake, man. You fell for that shit. Oh, oh my no. God. I'm sorry. <laughs> that classic misdirection. He got you, bro. Come on. Damn it. Jesus. How's this for small? Jesus Christ. Alchemy, yeah. Mm. Look at that. Okay, no more clappy magic. Oh! Uh-oh. Dying, destruction magic. No, my cabbages! <laughs> oh my god, I actually put that in! My cabbages! <laughs> Yo! Here's the running gag of Avatar, man. Come on. Hey, that was a nice touch from Death Battle. I love that. <laughs> My cabbages! <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, that's good. I use Torf's um, ability to sense them from the ground. Ooh! Avatar State. Yep. Can't believe that worked. Nope. Come on, you thought it was over? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. There you go. It's it's this ends now. It's over. It was nice knowing you, Edward, but it's over. That, oh, that's an overkill, bro. At least I'm taller than you. Well, that's your last words, bro. Come on. You left me no choice. Dude, I told you it was gonna be overkill. I, this, I told you it's gonna be an overkill. As soon as he hits Avatar State, it's done. Like he used all four elements to strike you, and his last words was, "At least I'm taller than you." <laughs> Ko, looks like Ed didn't have a leg to stand on, or arm, I guess. Ed may have been more quick-witted and inventive, and he certainly had more combat experience. But Aang's bending abilities were far more versatile and readily mm. available than combat alchemy. Yeah, it had cool stuff like cannons and gun trumpets, <laughs> but Aang was fast enough to react to lightning, which mm. is way faster than dodging a measly bullet. Recall how Aang survived an explosion that destroyed most of a ten-story building. By examining the size of the building and thus the volume of the conical explosion, this Dang. blast must have equaled about 30 kilotons of TNT. Mm. That's cool, but Aang did way more when he carved up a circle around that city in Avatar State. Yeah. The force to blast such a huge ravine around the city of Yu Dao was a <laughs> massive undertaking. By measuring the width, length, and depth of the yeah, effect area compared to the size of the city, we found it would take almost 160 kilotons of TNT to pull that off. More than five times greater than Ed's best durability <laughs> feat. So Aang definitely had the stuff to crush Ed's automail arm mm. and the rest of him. Granted, Ed could reach this sort of power by sacrificing his life force. Remember Kimberly's explosion, the one empowered by a Philosopher's Stone, a blast worth 157 kilotons of TNT? Mm -hmm. That's almost identical to Aang's feat. And True. theoretically, <laughs> Ed could have been capable of this level of power. Theoretically. However, a Philosopher's Stone uses many souls, while Ed could only draw from his one. Mm. Not to mention, drawing from his own life force meant his power-up had a very short and dangerous duration limit compared to the Avatar state, That's true. which has no such limit. But even so, Ed's tactics and creativity kept him in the fight, yet the Avatar's speed, power, and versatility was too much for him. Too much! He may be a pacifist in canon and would hardly <laughs> kill anyone, but unleashing his full power is a sight to behold. Mm. Just when Ed thought he had the hang of it, he alchemist the mark. The winner is Avatar A. Avatar Aang. I told you, it was Thanks too much for, much for Edward. Battle if you want the battle too music much. for yourself, you can get it by clicking the link down below.
And if you'd like to see some more battle and death, make sure to click the link over there. All right, who's next? Who's next? Let's ride. Go, Ghost Rider, holy shit. I don't know who that is. Ghost, I know it was Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider from Marvel, I'm pretty sure, versus Lobo. I don't know who the fuck Lobo is. I don't know. But I know Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is someone that I know pretty well. Um, so, uh, I don't know who Lobo is. So, anyone who knows Lobo, please tell me who he is and where he's from. And yeah, um, that's the end of the video, guys. Like I said, uh, like... Guys, it was it was pretty apparent from the get go. Let's be honest. Like I said, Edward Elric is amazing. His strategies, his alchemy, you know how he uses them. It's amazing. You saw it in the battle himself. You know when Ang throws water bending, he uses like a he creates something that just reverses the water bending straight back at Ang. You know he's very creative, very creative guy, and that always keeps him in battle. But Ang is just too much for him, bro. Like. <laughs> Even without the Avatar State, Ang was whooping his ass, and then the moment he went to the Avatar State, I was like, it's over, bro, it's over. Even Edward knew, the moment he saw him going into the Avatar State, Edward was like, shit, I'm dead. Like, <laughs> it's, it's just too much. Like they said, the experience Ang has from the other Avatars, uh, the reincarnations, he could just, all, you know, all of those experiences, um, the power-ups, the elements that he can wield, Avatar State... It's just too much for Edward, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Edward, but it's the truth. It's, you gotta face reality, bro. You're taller than him. At least that. At least you have that. And at least you have that. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching my reaction to Ang versus Edward Elric. Hope you guys enjoyed my reaction to it. If you guys did enjoy my reaction, then be sure to smash the like button, comment, and share. Do those good things so to see more content on me. On me doing more death battle reactions like this in the future. However, if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and enjoy the DRP kill today. So you don't miss a single video from my channel, guys. Whether it's gaming videos, or the reaction videos, or whether it's live streams. So as always, guys, this is your boy Dina signing out. And have a nice day. Stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. So until then, peace.